Hi, and welcome to Charlotte Talks Transformers, where we'll be taking a look at Transformers Animated Episode 8, Nanosec. So we get to play the game. Was this a filler episode or wasn't it a filler episode? Because, like, my instinct is to say it was a filler episode. But there was a lot of plot happening. No, maybe not. You know, this was a weird episode. Um, it involved kind of a human character that was just introduced in this episode and I can't remember this guy's name for the life of me but long story short is this episode had a very basic plot where Megatron is continuing to hang out with Professor Sumdak and being all like oh I need my body back like this bull crap that you're giving me for my body like he had this like little claw hand and it was kind of kind of cute and kind of adorable but he's like I can't do anything with this little claw hand like I need an actual robotic body, and for that I need, uh, Distronium, I believe it was called. Yeah, he's like, I need Distronium. And Professor Sumdak's all like, hey, cat. Professor Sumdak's all like, oh, uh, well, the only Distronium we have is, like, just the teeniest little amount, and it's, like, way over there on the other side of the city, and we can't really transport it here, womp womp. And Professor Sumdak, this guy just needs to... Just grow a brain cell. Megatron's so clearly evil. Like, clearly. I, I don't know, man. Like, Megatron sounds like a villain. He acts like a villain. He's yelling at Professor Sumdak. Like, and every single time, he's like, well, why don't we call your dear Autobot friends to help us? Megatron's like, no! Like, he freaks out. And <laughs> Megatron, I don't know. It's like... Megatron's being clearly evil. Like, he can't even pretend to be good, effectively. And Professor Sumdak's just like, mm, poor, poor Megatron. Like, this poor guy. But, yeah, so anyways. Um, the episode kind of starts off with this human thief being caught by Bumblebee and Bulkhead as he's, like, trying to steal. So he gets sent into jail, and then Megatron for some odd reason decides, hmm, Professor Sumdak is working on speed techno-organic technology and here's this random criminal that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Let's combine them and get the Destronium. And Easy fall guy. Yeah, what? It's a weird plan because he's not really an easy, he's not in anything, you know? He's just kind of... Yeah, but if he gets caught, he could absolve himself of all blame. Like, this is just a common thief. That he, is true. He was able to steal the, the stuff. We don't know this guy. So maybe Megatron's thinking ahead. Maybe maybe that's it, you know? But, yeah, I don't... Regardless of why he chose him, it's a dumb plan. <laughs> it's a really dumb plan. Because Megatron, um, once this guy gets the suit and he's, like, running at high speeds, Megatron's hologram appears in front of him and he's like, oh, yeah, this uh, hologram of myself can only appear at high speeds. Um, FYI, I want you to do this thing, and in return, here's Professor Sumdak's credit card, and he just gives them his credit card information, and he's like, yeah, um, go and make a deposit, and the rest of your payment will uh, be given to you once the package is delivered. And so this guy goes to an ATM, I'm assuming puts in the credit card information, and a ton of cash just comes spewing out at him. I'm like, make it rain! Make it rain! I don't know how... The ATM machines work in Detroit, but they don't work like that here. <laughs> so, okay, so we're going to switch gears and go to the Autobots because Sorry got Bumblebee these turbo boosters of some kind. And Bumblebee's got the need, the need for speed. And he's like, yeah, man, turbo boosters. This is exactly what I want. And he's like, please attach them to me. And everyone's like, Bumblebee, we know you. This is not a good idea. And so the boosters are there and you know that they can't not use the boosters. So the Autobots go off to go uh, grab Nanosec because he's becoming a bit of a menace. And Bumblebee is left alone with Sari. What could happen, am I right? Sari's like, you know what? Let's use this AllSpark key because we're now using it for any random thing. And, you know, let's just uh, plug these boosters into you. And uh, Bumblebee's like, great idea. Uh, turns out it's not such a great idea because he can't really um, control the, the boosters. And so he's just like speeding off everywhere. And it's a mess. Bumblebee, 
and sorry, don't make good decisions together. They should probably like Professor Sumdak should not allow his daughter to associate with these people. And the Autobots should keep Bumblebee away from any sort of incorrigible young people with all spark keys because it's just a recipe for disaster. So I do want to touch on uh, one part here. The fight between Nanosec, um, the guy in the speedster uniform is calling himself Nanosec. And for some reason, everyone knows that he's calling himself Nanosec. Like he didn't exactly announce it, but everyone just kind of knows. They're like, oh yes, this guy, Nanosec. And I'm like, when did he tell them? Anyways, doesn't matter. So Optimus is fighting Nanosec and using his grappling hook quite a bit. And this, this poor Optimus Prime, I don't know who thought that this was the best portrayal for Optimus Prime, but they were right. Because this Optimus Prime is like adorably bumbling he can't even defeat this nanosec guy who's like literally he okay optimus prime tried to grappling hook him and this nanosec guy got the cable for the grappling hook and just starts beating optimus prime with his own grappling hook cable and optimus prime's like ow <laughs> and i'm just like man leader of the autobots my butt <laughs> like this guy is so bumbling like I feel like in this episode, no one made good decisions, except for Prowl. Prowl continuously makes good decisions, but even he kind of wasn't really overly impressive. Although, uh, we did get to see Prowl's human hologram for the first time, and I must say, <laughs> uh, I have no words. I have no words for whatever that was. That mustache was, like, when I think a human version of Prowl, that's not what I think of. So, uh, I guess moving on. Uh, Nanosec, it becomes apparent that the suit is actually aging him. And so they basically, while he's running with the Dystronium, they basically just kind of wear him down until he's an old man and he can no longer sort of run, which is kind of horrifying. They don't really uh, mention how horrifying it is, but it's like this guy basically ran himself into old age and then just sort of collapsed on the ground. And I'm just sitting there like, that's some Rick and Morty stuff right there. Like, very existential terror-y and kind of like, I don't know. For me, I was sitting there like, oh man, this poor guy. Like, what's the rest of his life going to look like after this? But I like to read way too much into things. So, they ran him to an old man and they have the Dystronium. And Ratchet's all like, this Dystronium is going to blow up. We need to like get it somewhere safe, but they can't get it anywhere safe fast enough in time. And then Bumblebee's like, I can do this, man. And it was a very Iron Giant moment, like Superman, you know? And he's like, I'm gonna like blast it into the upper atmosphere. And Optimus Prime's like, Bumblebee, you can't fly. And Bumblebee's like, there is a way. And so, okay, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, the movie, but that scene where Cloud basically uses the power of friendship to propel himself into the sky to defeat Bahamut. I, I know I sound like an absolute nerd right now, but bear with me. No. They, they, <laughs> I know. Oh, the chick who's making a show about Transformers is a nerd, never would have guessed. But they do that scene where Bulkhead like propels Bumblebee up into the sky and then Prowl is holding Bumblebee and like, chucks him up into the sky and Bumblebee somehow makes his way into the upper atmosphere and then as he's falling down Ratchet and Optimus Prime have to like cool him down and settle him to a nice safe fall and it was it really reminded me of Advent Children that one scene I was like man power of friendship it's a good thing like how else can you explain him getting propelled into the upper atmosphere like I don't know the exact measurements but that's a ways that's a ways so anyways all's well that ends well uh, Megatron does not get his body back. Um, the Dystronium does not blow up half of Detroit. And uh, no no lessons were learned. Uh, it just kind of ended, you know? It just sort of ended on a like, uh -huh, well, wasn't that a fun adventure note? So I, I don't know if we can call this a filler episode. Uh, it definitely did not advance the plot in any way, but at the same time, I kind of felt like we got some good moments with the characters. There was also something I caught that I don't know if it was an actual reference to anything, but when Bumblebee and Nanosec were like going through the park, it kind of looked like a Tron reference. I don't know if it actually was or not, but I feel like 
like I, got, I was getting a lot of references in this episode, you know, Tron, Iron Giant, Final Fantasy, and I don't know if they were intending that, but it doesn't mean anything. I'm just talking now. Uh, yeah, that was the episode. I'm going to call it a filler episode. It wasn't <laughs> that great of an episode. I'm actually astonished that I managed to talk about it for this long. But I actually looked ahead, and it looks like the next episode is called Along Came a Spider. And that can really only be referencing one thing. So hang in there, guys. Looks like filler's over <laughs> after this episode. Because next episode, I'm thinking we got some black arachnia. So that was this episode. Please leave a comment, subscribe. Love to hear from you. Bye.